Hey everybody, let's go live on this thing. Uh, I was suspended for 24 hours again for for showing reproduced content. I didn't. I didn't show anything. I didn't show anything on screen. I didn't show anything. So I thought maybe it's the music in the background. Maybe that's what TikTok gets me for. Huh? If you play some music in the background, it will go like, "Oh, you're uh, showing reproduced content." Though technically, according to the guidelines. That's not reproduced content. You are allowed to play music in the background. Lots of people do that on, on TikTok, you know, on TikTok Live. So that wasn't it. You know, either way, let's have a little chit chat about this and that, you know. I was thinking just a minute ago, you know, there are these uh, very left wing people who always call you racist. They're white people who call other, we other white people racist all the time. And they like to have a house, don't they? They like to have, a be able to have an affordable place to live in in, in their own country. And so you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to do something for them. I'll support those people. I mean, it's not like I hate leftist whites so much that I don't want them to exist anymore. I want them to have affordable housing. I'm not even a bad person, right? But if you want to give them affordable housing and you start explaining to them, well, look, you know, in a country like the Netherlands since 1950, five and a half million people were added that did not descend from the native people who were, who were alive in 1950. So we have a tremendous amount of immigrants and also millions of people who were not born in the Netherlands. Might this be the reason why housing is no longer affordable? You know, according to a research in Spain, a uh, mere 17% increase in the population due to migration saw the housing cost rise by 50% over a decade. You know, so that's just extreme, isn't it? Huh? Um, and you wonder how, how, how do these left-wing people reason that they think migration is somehow good for them. How? Like, I don't represent big corporations here. I'm against the big corporations. Nowadays, it seems to be the leftists who support big corporations. So I really don't get that, you know? Like, what we should be doing, of course, is explain each other. I think that the left wing and the right wing white people are much closer to each other than we think. Maybe, maybe mainly because of the media, we are being divided a little bit more, right? And I think if we all want to have affordable housing, it's not just the big corporations buying the housing up. It's also the millions of immigrants pouring into your country for whom there is no place to live anyway. But if the government doesn't want to look racist, they will have to give those immigrants housing with priority. And that's exactly what's happening in countries like the Netherlands, Germany, England, Britain. They give priority housing for social housing and subsidized housing to the immigrants. So you are not going to be living in those places, are you? No, you'll have to live in someone's attic for a thousand pounds a month or, or, or more, you know? <laughs> and, and that's so insane that I think left-wing people are much more likely to believe what the government tells them to believe. And the government plays a game, right? They tell you a left-wing story, right? Because they want people to obey and be submissive, right? And and they don't like right-wingers because right-wingers are people who do their own research and they, they read books and they inform themselves and they find out, they find stuff out, they find out that what you say isn't so. You know? So hello everybody, uh, I see some people coming into the live chat box. You know, I tried live streaming on, uh, on YouTube today, uh, but there's like, there's like a 20 second delay between me, me and the YouTube, whereas on TikTok it's like one second or so, you know? <laughs> Why does everything, uh, the migrants, you mean, or the leftists, whatever they touch turns to shit? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know, oh, I got some wires tangled up over here. Just a minute. So, yeah, I, I tried streaming on YouTube today, and I don't even know if I am allowed to mention the word YouTube on TikTok because I'm, I'm going to get. <laughs> yeah, I was banned yesterday. I'm just trying to explain it. Like, I was banned yesterday because of showing reproduced content, even though I didn't show anything. So I thought maybe it was the music I was playing in the background, which is also bizarre because tons of people can play music in the background of, of TikTok. You know, weird, you, know, you get you get flagged for something that you didn't do. It was okay, huh? But it's only like 20. It, it wasn't my live access, by the way, but I'm using a software called the TikTok Live Studio, and that was suspended. My normal live access on the on the phone app was still fine, you know? What's my opinion on Jonathan Bowden? Uh, I didn't really listen or or investigate this this fellow that much. You know, I suppose he and uh, Mosley were great speakers, but you know they're dead now. You know, so we need to move on. 
look at <laughs> look at colored neighborhoods, <laughs> black neighborhoods. Takes them six months to turn them into shit. Now, uh, you know, in the Netherlands, let's see what wh what do we have in the Netherlands? We have an, a neighborhood south of in the south of Amsterdam called the Bijlmer, uh, where you have these you know terrible flat apartments like twenty stories high, where they stack uh, people from Suriname, black people. Most of our black people are from Suriname, at least until recently. Nowadays, we have more and more. Uh, other people, Somali and Nigerians as well, but they stack them all together in housing that isn't, you know, proper anyway, you know, uh, and then basically they leave them to themselves because a lot of them are unemployed, but, you know, and still what's, what's so funny, I think maybe in the Netherlands, barely l half a percent of people are African now. You might think it's more, but we have a lot more Arabs and Muslims and Turks and so on, Indonesian people, Maluku people, right? we have a lot of those immigrants uh africans probably just half a percent or so yet when you turn on the dutch television it's like in every commercial <laughs> there's like 10 black people in every commercial and there's like uh leading black characters in every in every dutch uh, uh tv series or dutch produced movie so they're really hyping the black man in in the netherlands even though they are an extremely small minority uh in our country so that's just weird, you know. So I didn't have any set topic for today. I just wanted to try out my uh, my TikTok stream again, see if people have some questions or something. Yeah, it's the same in Germany. Yeah, they they hype the certain the black man is a uh, like he as though he were Superman, right? They should give him all a T-shirt with the uh, you know the the Superman logo with the big big N on their chest, so that everybody knows that they're special, right? You know. Uh, is the stream at this time because you were back? Yeah, yeah, I was uh, suspended because of uh, showing reproduced content. I have no idea why, because I didn't show anything. So it might happen right now. It might happen in a second. It might happen again. But uh, my live access was not taken away. Only my live studio software access was taken away. That's why. So I'm coming back here. Yeah. I wanted to keep the uh, the winning streak of doing live streams every day. I didn't want to break it, so that's why <laughs> that's why I'm back again. Also, if you fall off a horse, you you need to get back on the horse right away, right? So, am I a fan of architecture? I think modernist, brutalist styles cause depression. Yeah, probably. But also a lack of uh, green trees and uh, you know, people need to have access to nature. If you walk through a forest for 15 minutes, all your stress goes away. Uh, you will not have this effect when you walk through a, a brutalist architectural uh, city. No, you know what? Uh, you know what's funny? If I spend, oh, here we go again. I lost. Oh, wait, did I lose the connection? Okay, I'm back again. Okay, I thought it was. I was. I thought it was already suspended again for some joking stuff but apparently there was a glitch or something okay okay either way i was talking about uh if i spend a week hiking in nature and i come back to the city it takes me three or four days before i start to think of cities as beautiful again and i'm talking about cities like utrecht in, in the netherlands which are nice they have a very nice city center right um and that's because the buildings the concrete the roads it just doesn't look beautiful but if I spend a week in a big city and I go hiking within four seconds, I find nature absolutely beautiful again. And this tells me something that human beings lock themselves up in these absolutely uh, uninteresting places, the cities with this shitty, ugly architecture that damages the soul, makes you depressed as someone noticed. Yeah, absolutely true. Eh? Yeah, Japanese concept of forest bathing is great. Yeah, maybe it is, you know. But yeah, fresh air, streams of water, fresh water. You know, in northern Sweden, you have uh, Europe's last wilderness, untouched wilderness. Uh, places where uh, you can stick your cup in a stream of water and drink it without having to filter it or boil it. It's just clean because there's no pollution up there. Uh, and same in Sweden, I've also been to forests and there's a little sign where you go there on the hiking trails, a little sign that says uh, no humans have lived here for the last 400 years. <laughs> and you can tell they leave these forests alone, unlike the managed forests of the Netherlands, which are really bred for their timber. Right. You have actual real forests in Sweden. We don't have those in the Netherlands. 
everything in the Netherlands was planted by humans. Whereas in Sweden, you can st still go to these places where you have s swamps that haven't been touched for centuries, you know, and that's so, that's just very beautiful. I thought it was really nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Johannes, do you think, do you, do you think the British are European brothers or not? Yeah. British people are our brothers. Yeah. You know, I myself, guess what? I'm 40% genetically Celtic and I have, I have actual ancestors who were living in Britain uh, before the Roman age in the, in the place, in the, what is now called the town of Bath, where you have your thermal baths as well. That's why the place is called Bath. So I have people from there long ago. And of course, I also have my Germanic ancestors, uh, Viking ancestors and so on. So yeah, of course, we're brothers. I mean, these people <clears throat> were of the same stock originally anyway. They were the bell beaker people. Celtic bell beaker people, and then even the Anglo-Saxons technically also descend from these type of bell beaker people uh, to some extent anyway. So we are kind of the same, you know. Well, I don't know if I'm Anglo, I'm just, I have Celtic ancestors from there, you know, makes me part, part Anglo, part Anglo, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, I guess I can keep doing the streams, but I won't be able to play music or show you anything on screen because that might get me suspended, you know, so I won't do that anymore then. I'll just have to keep talking, which is also fine, so I can practice speaking, you know. You know, you know I had this, uh, where do I have it? I still have it here. Do you see this little thing? I had this kind of spit guard in front of my microphone, but now I just have this foam thing on top of it because this is a bit big. It gets in the way of my face, you know, so I don't... Don't use that anymore. I just switched it up a little bit. You know, here someone asked, the Dutch and English are very similar genetically. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, probably asks, <laughs> if you're Australian, you're British. Yeah. You're only you're only there because we put you there. Yeah. To some extent, that's true. Have you heard the story? They always say the same thing, like Australia started as a penal colony where they sent uh, the criminals. But actually what really happened was, uh, they began inventing new laws in Britain so that if you were jaywalking, they'd send you to Australia. Or if you were smoking, they'd send you to Australia. Uh, they really started making stuff up to justify uh, deporting you to Australia. Because in the game, the game that our elites play, it's a global chessboard, and they needed a, they needed a, a, you know, a place close to China in case in the future you would want to fight China. So that, that's why the, that's why they created Australia and New Zealand to have military bases there. Now they are U.S. bases, you know, so that they could uh, play uh, basically checkmate or not not quite checkmate. How do you say? Uh, they could. Uh, I don't know the right term, but they could, uh, you know, put pressure on China. I think that was that's what it was all about in the end, you know. <laughs> I can't count my disconnects and system crashes when I was flaming the unionists in the web. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tasmania is reputedly very haunted. By what? What's it haunted by? An outpost, yeah. So do you think there will be a future for a Frisian culture in the Netherlands? Yeah, of course there will be. You know, you're a small group, like 500,000 people or so, or a bit more or less. But in, that's a large number of people, actually. You know, in, in the ancient days, you would have communities of no more than 500 or 200 people, and they still survived. So don't worry about it. You just have to think strategically. You may need to conquer a little bit of Denmark at some point <laughs> to transplant yourself to new lands, you know. What makes me most angry about European governments, uh, someone asks. Uh, it's that our... Our European politicians are employees. They're not actually in charge. They are simply managers who take orders from the from the ownership that doesn't even live in Europe. I think they live in, in Washington, the Pentagon, and so on. There you have the, the strategists, the geo, geo strategists, who basically know that they colonized Western Europe after World War II, and they installed. You know, you know when they speak of regime change, you think of Syria, right? Or you think of maybe Ukraine the, during the Maidan Revolution. But so Germany was also regime changed after World War II, of course. But even under Scholz, that's a regime change. Uh, the Netherlands with Mark Rutte, who is now exiting politics, uh, he was also a regime change for the Dutch. 
and 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 Macron, think of Macron. That was a regime change. You know, Rishi Sunak is a regime change. We've gotten the same regime changes, except when they did them to us, they didn't need to use violence because our people believe the TV. Our people believe the news in the newspapers. You know, that's just insane. I hear New Zealand has the best weather, yeah, maybe. Not too cold, not too hot. That will be great, yeah. So, yeah, I suppose uh, the real problem with the European politicians is they're just not in charge. Christine Lagarde of the European Central Bank, she's not in charge. Again, she's just an employee taking orders. But from whom? Well, the U.S. Yeah. And although I do notice there is an actual conflict going on between the communists, the communists and the Zionists in Europe, um, though America is clearly Zionist occupied, uh, the, Europe is more communist occupied, really, the cog instead of a zog. Uh, and they, these are basically different factions of the same people, but they really do oppose each other. So there's a, there's a split there, there's a rift there. All right. And this is something to take into account, that Europe does not automatically support Zionism as much as the USA does. It's very different. You know, TV promotes hypnosis. Yeah. Do I support immigration? Immigration should always be allowed in small numbers, not, not, in the, not when you send a million single males from one place to another. That's an invasion. That's an act of war. But if somebody truly falls in love and they marry and they have kids, they are, they are allowed to live somewhere. I mean, this isn't a purity contest. I've said that before. I don't believe in purity. But I, I don't think uh, you should, we should never allow mass immigration of similar people, especially if they're single, single young men, which is simply a, a, a warrior cohort. All right? they're just, this, is, this is an act of war. I mean, there's a place in England, say, for example, a town where you have 500 native inhabitants and they're getting 2,400 immigrants housed in their town, uh, all of them male. Guess what's going to happen to the young girls in that town? And when those girls do get attacked, the media will ignore everything because, well, the victims are white and the, the perpetrators are brown, so let's not talk about it. Hush, hush. Like in Dublin, you know, when, when the stabber stabbed a couple of kids, they call him the stabber or the knife wielder, right? They say the knife attacked two children. They don't say that it was an Algerian Muslim. As you should tell them. Yeah. So what if they are being discriminated against in their home country? Yeah, so, so, you know, everybody gets discriminated against. This whole notion of saying like, oh, I'm being discriminated, that's just weak. You're just weak people, but that's not an excuse to move from one place to another. User number, you know, people like that with three followers get lost, you know. The best is all black to Africa and Oceania, you know. Why Oceania, you know? Or white to Europe, you know? Well, then also all Asians back to Asia, obviously. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, I get some information from people. Under Elon Musk, Twitter has changed a bit and they have fewer employees, but you still get banned, you know? Someone with 7,000 followers I know uh, got banned, suspended, so it didn't help, you know. Why is that, you know? Freedom of speech is so important yet also so dangerous because uh, the people in power really don't want people to think for themselves, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love the hat, you know. Yeah, do you think Muskie knows about them? Maybe he is one of them, right? I was thinking about something that Netanyahu, the leader of Israel, said almost 21 years ago in 2002. There was a congressional hearing where he said that he wanted to uh, attack Iran, but not with bombs and bullets, but by sending them episodes of Melrose Place and Beverly Hills 90210. Because he called it subversive. And I had been thinking about this for a while. Like, so this is, first of all, it gives you a glimpse of how they really think about things. They use media as subversion, as a war 
strategy. But what exactly does he mean by subversion? Well, he gave the examples even. You know, you show poor people Melrose Place and you show poor people Beverly Hills 90210, these, these soap operas, these series, and people will want to have such houses. They will want to have those cars and the sunglasses and the, and the watches. And they want to have those lifestyles. And then they will want to work for it. And that's how you subvert people. You can literally get people to do what you want them to do by dangling before their eyes, you know, precious little things that they might want to have. Things they would not know that they wanted if you hadn't showed them showed it to them but by showing it to them now all of a sudden they want it right? and that's also by the way how pornography works by showing people pornography you show them things that they want or, or things they might not even know that they wanted right it, it may be also like uh perversions and fetishes that you show them that they didn't know they wanted but then they want those things because now they've seen it and now they want it too and that's subversion that's exactly how subversion works it's by giving people the idea you know if you work hard you can be a billionaire you can have a ferrari and you can have the the bombshell blonde girlfriend right and that's just how it works it's all subversion and once you realize that you you can go into your own mind and do some work there and say okay well wait a minute i don't want these people to have this kind of power over me i don't want to be subverted so what do i do well you quit watching tv <laughs> i haven't watched tv in uh, 20 years or so so that helps. Don't watch TV and don't watch porn. And your, your mind will literally heal and be free again. You know. It's psychological warfare, yeah. But they do it mainly through, their, through the TV channels that people voluntarily decide to watch. That's so extreme, right? Satanism comes in many forms, yeah. Bro, you should go to Rumble. You're less likely to bend on there. It's a promising alternative. I do usually... Uh, uh, I have this auto automated sync uh, sync system, synchronized system. So my my longer videos like this one, I will re I will post the replay onto my YouTube, and then within a week or two or so, usually the videos are also copied to Rumble. So I I have a Rumble account, uh, and it's like also at the Great Johannes, I believe, and so my uh, my backup videos end up there in the end. But I don't I don't actively use Rumble. I just use it as a backup system. You know, if we keep letting them in, we'll be washed out. Yeah. You know, the, the idea that we can create societies that will always be peaceful and then make those societies more complex with technology and then bring in more people to also increase the social complexion, complexity. No, no, that is not going to last. No matter what the ruling classes want, it's not going to last. I read a book today. Uh... Called, I think it was called Six Societies by Robert Edgerton. I'm not sure if that was the title. But the book, uh, let me tell you what it was about. It shows you how uh, evolution does not lead to improvement of social situations. Evolution really only favors power cliques to rule over their people. Uh, and this, how do they do it? How do, how do ruling classes ever really rule uh, anybody at all? by inserting, injecting uh, maladapted strategies into the population. Basically, you get people to do things that are not healthy for them, that are not good for them, right? But that is how you control them. So maybe I c if I can think of an example, uh, say in uh, Shaka Zulu, you know the Zulu warrior uh, who, who reigned over the Zulu kingdom uh, in Africa? At first, he helped his people fight their enemies, and so they praised him and supported him. But then he turned against his own people uh, to the point where, when after his mother died, after Shaka's mother died, he banned sex. He didn't allow people to have sex. And then he said that if pregnant women are seen out during the day, they ought to be killed. He would have pregnant women killed and he banned sex. But this is... This went on for quite a long time until his half brothers eventually assassinated Shaka. So you see, but then wh why is a man like Shaka so twisted, so disturbed that he would do things like that? Well, that is exactly how ruling classes rule. They 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 make people behave in ways that are unhealthy to them. And can you guess now in our own society in the Western world, what maladaptive strategies are we imposing onto young people now? Well, pornography 
the LGBT, the gender neutral society. Why don't you clip your balls off and be a woman, right? What are we pushing out every day? The rainbow cult? Exactly. We are telling people, uh, w stop having kids. Uh, you know, don't even think of marriage, right? But at the same time, there's what is interesting that something else is also happening. Due to the higher increasing cost of living and the impossibility of ever owning a home, uh, men and women are finding each other again because they have to be together now in order to even live at all. So they're finding each other again. So feminism wanted to liberate women of men, right? Um, but now those very, very liberated women have to enter relationships again because they can, can never possibly afford rent on their own, you know? And that's just how it is, you know? Yeah, the garbage they put on TV. It's very subtle, but you know, someone asks, do I answer questions? Yeah, yeah, but not everything. Some people ask me something weird and then, then I don't answer it. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna rumble. They're also teaching unlimited growth by having all the different foreigners in your country, yeah. Unlimited growth, yeah, because they they think they can exploit the the migrants. They think they see it merely as an investment in a new people that they can exploit and sell Nike and Beverly Hills and you know sunglasses and whatever. And that's what it all is. They just see they they think they're we we see the destruction of our culture and our people and the damage it does to our societies. But the elites they just see money coming in. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care about you and me. They see us as sheep, not even, but as ants in an anthill. That's all they think of us, you know. The European Union is a scam organization, yeah. And the rest, yeah, is way poorer. Returning poorer. Yeah, you know, they want, why do they want the natives to have low birth rates and the immigrants to come in in such large numbers? Because they work for less. They are low maintenance people, so to speak. They're cheaper. They, they will never own the big houses that we used to own. And so they're just replacing a high maintenance people with a low maintenance people. So it's cheaper. They're basically cutting costs, reducing the cost while still remaining competitive vis-a-vis -vis China and Russia and so on. You know? Am I a fan of Mustache Man? No, not really. I have read his speeches, though, and there's a lot of good material in there. Also, Goebbels' speeches are like very intelligent really they deserve more credit than what we get what they get from the media of course is that you know in if you read the speeches they they basically say things that you know that's why they don't want you to know about it you know all right it seems that i can uh, just keep speaking because you know, I was suspended yesterday for showing reproduced content, so I, I'm trying to figure out what was it. Probably because I was playing music in the background, they cut me out. And uh, so I can't do that anymore. I can't really show much on screen either, because, uh, you know. What do you think about our new prime minister in the Netherlands? Uh, he's a controlled opposition. He's a Zionist. You know, he doesn't care about us, you know. And so the exiting prime minister, Mark Rutte, you know, turns out he he's one of those. Well, I don't even want to talk about it. He's just, it's not all right. Watch, watch now how they start to roll back on immigration, but will also be against deportation. Yeah. Yeah, in, in England you have like your home office that this that whoever these people are who decide who can come into your countries and <laughs> they're all foreigners. <laughs> they're not going to close the borders. They just want to bring their people people in. You know, I you know what you know what's even more likely is that they will start deporting white people from their own countries, from their own homes. That's more likely to happen than that they will close the borders, you know. Yeah. Yeah, someone was wondering what happened yesterday. Uh, well, I use a software called TikTok Live Studio, and if you show pre-recorded videos or something, then you can get suspended from it for a day. But I wasn't showing anything, so it was a mistake yesterday. But I, and then I reasoned maybe it's the the background music. Yeah. They want Europe permanently 
ethnically diverse to control us, but they don't want us completely replaced. I think they will uh, replace us completely, though. Down to 2%, no more. And also, uh, it's not really true that they want an ethnically diverse people as though, as, though, as though they're playing an ethnic version of divide and conquer. No, they really want to mix all the races together so that they can then control the global market, really. They see people just as a market to sell to, to scam and to con. They don't care about us. Yeah. Let's see if I could uh, open the news over here. Let's go to Zero Hedge or something. Maybe they have something uh, going on. Zero Hedge is always very negative about things, but, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see, ready or not, here they come. Yeah, I know I have to keep speaking when you do a live show. Otherwise, if there's too much uh, silence, then people will clock out. Yeah? So, Dapper Hat, Western Man. Yeah, this is a uh, Fedora Poet Hat, the poet of uh, Christie's London. It's a uh, fur felt. And I'm going to start wearing it now, uh, you know, as much as I can. I only wear it indoors for the, uh, for the video. I wouldn't wear it normally. You know, if I'm not recording, then I would just wouldn't wear it indoors. But... You know, because uh, you're supposed to wear a hat in public spaces only, uh, including, say, public transportation or uh, or uh, if you sit down at a restaurant, you would normally take it off, hang it up a coat hanger and so on. Yeah, I'm trying to promote hat wearing. If the government do this, why blame immigrants? Well, because the immigrants are no good. So we need to send them back. So it doesn't matter what the government does. These people have to leave eventually. If we overthrow our government, then the immigrants will go home. They will have to go home. They can't stay. We will never live together. This this will only end up end in war and bloodshed. So we better just go separate the separate our ways as soon as we can. Michael Collins, an Irish revolutionary, wears a similar hat in one of his most iconic photos. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. This is um. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a. Uh, there's like a headband there. It's it's too dark. Wait, wait, let me shine a light on it if I can. Do you see it? You see the headband, and that's like how it's supposed to be, right? Like out, you'll see it better outside, but because I'm uh, in the lighting setting that I have here, you can't really see the the band very well. Here. Did you go home when you occupied South Africa? Nobody occupied South Africa. It was empty land, and it was first settled by the Dutch settlers and the Portuguese and so on. The, the the black people were living at least a thousand miles out from the coastline and the South Africans, the white Europeans, they built that country up all by themselves, for themselves. And then the black people came. So basically, technically speaking, black people are, are immigrants in South Africa. You, you are not from there at all. I mean, it's not like you don't have the right to start your own countries. Why don't you? Why don't you build your own countries? Every country in Africa was built by Europeans. You know, people, you, you people say things like, oh, you stole all our money. No, Europeans invented money. We introduced money to you because you didn't have money. You, you had clams. You want your clams back? Fine. I'll send you a bag of clams, okay? You want your clams back? And you say, like, we stole your resources. No, we didn't. You didn't have the resources. You didn't own the resources. You didn't even know where the resources were. You, didn't, you had nothing. The Europeans dug out the mines and brought the materials to their industries to work with them to make materials out of them, to make coats and clothing and computers and whatever, and railroads and train tracks and whatever. We made all this stuff. Where is your industry? How come Africa today still doesn't have a proper production manufacturing industry where you can produce all these things on your own for yourself? Because you really don't need us. You still have all the resources. Africa still has most of these resources in your own damn soil. You just need to have your technicians, your mathematicians, your entrepreneurs, your scientists, right? Go and get educated. But hey, if you can't get educated, then go fuck yourself. Nothing was created by Africa. They didn't invent anything. Bye. No, the West, the West did not destroy Iraq. 
the United States and Israel did that. Leave us out of it. We Europeans didn't want this at all. We didn't do that. You know, we weren't involved. Here, people love insulting people, right? It's always the brown people. They don't know any respect. Now, you need to go back to school. Asshole. Tony Blair, yeah, that's a British, see, British American. Leave us out of it, you know. The way I see it, Europe borders on the Islamic world. That's a fact. Europe also borders on the Russian world. That's a fact. And we also have borders with, we neighbor with Turkey. So that's also a fact. And with those parties, we will simply have to work, not by migrating them to us, but by simply accepting, you know, people live in their own house, in their own country, in their own way. And that's how it's going to be. Right? We will have whatever diplomatic ties. Europe is going to arm itself to the teeth because the United States is not going to protect, protect us forever. Eventually, they will drop away, whether it is this century or the next. I suspect this century, and I expect quite soon already, the United States will simply start to falter. Right, Their, The big engine that they have will go like... It will stop. And then Europe will have to fend for itself. Uh, I'm prepared for this. Europeans are not. We need to start waking Europeans up and letting them know, hey, listen up. This protection that we used to get from the USA, it's not going to last forever. We're going to have to be able to fight for ourselves. And that's what we're going to do. We we'll make it very, very, very clear that Europe will, Europeans will rule Europe for hundreds of thousands of years to come. I think Europe can take over NATO since, you know, if the U.S. drops out, Europeans will still continue. We will have our own European army, a united Europe. Yeah, zero empathy, you know. Yeah, school is where people go to get programmed. Yeah, and more often than not, the program is, you know, full of lies. You know, it's just treacherous. Yeah, the USA today is an occupied government. You know, the American people, they vote for a Democrat or for a Republican basically because... The Democrat voters, they want to look good internationally. And the Republican voters, they want to have it good in their own country. And so that's the only difference. But both of them are a bit mistaken in here. You should be voting for your health and your strength primarily, regardless of well, whatever candidate or program, you know. Uh, I, I keep having an unstable internet connection. I don't know why, but that's just how it is, you know. All right, so I was watching, I was looking on uh, Zero Hedge to see if I, I don't know if I'm even allowed to read anything. Maybe I'll get suspended again, you know. I'll just mention the topics or something. Here we go again. So, okay. I thought I was suspended just as I was talking about it, but I suppose I... Uh, I'm still I'm still live. I'm just I just had an internet connection problem. Even though I don't even abuse the system at all. Let's see, I can change the I can change the audio bit rate in the in the future and that's all right. So glitchy glitch, yeah. So someone asks, uh, worst thing ever for a nation is to have an elite who are not of our own people. Yeah. Always leads to bad. That may be true, yeah. If you are of the same stock and if you care about that, maybe you will at least, you know, care for the survival of your people. But this is no longer the case. The people who rule over us, they don't see themselves as a physical beings, but rather as a mental spirits only. They see themselves as disconnected from reality. That's my view. Uh, and so they can imagine themselves merely being spirits inhabiting bodies that they don't really care about, right? That, yeah. That there's this whole cult. Uh, it started probably before Philo Judeas of Alexandria. And there are many thinkers in the European world, including Martin Heidegger, who eventually try to impose this, uh, this, the idea that everything is connected. Kissinger also spoke of that. Everything's connected. Everything's one big mind. 
they want to create a sort of god mind out of the universe and what they what they want to do is they want to fuse all the minds of all the people together this is basically also the goal of zuckerberg for of facebook uh, the idea was to create this uh, metaverse where all human beings are fused together into one giant god mind that that is what they really worship uh, it is very this may be very strange because the elite religions are not the religions of the common people it's all very different georgia cologne or maloney was for her <laughs> yeah she was for her people for about five seconds and then she betrayed them already yeah. that's just really bad leftists use emotion and tell sob stories to people who do know political research yeah. yeah they make it about the individual child or something and and then you try to explain to them well you know sure we'll take care of that one child but the other million they should be in elsewhere taken care of elsewhere like uh, do you remember a long time ago when trump was president uh he was being accused of uh, of separating children from their parents at the border turns out the real story was that uh child smugglers were smuggling children across the border and trump separated the children from the child smugglers the the people claiming to be the the parents of those children were not the parents of those children so uh he was saving children from smugglers who who knows what the hell they would have done with those kids you know they would have who smuggles children across the border you know you're selling them into some kind of you know pp network you know what the hell are you doing man uh, thoughts on secularism yeah, my idea was that the europeans will not be able to unite based on some kind of secular belief there needs to be a sort of spiritual infusion like a spiritual strength that binds us together so that we can you know fight for our people again fight for ourselves again stand up i think we need uh, a spiritual connection in that sense so and i think also in the common conflict with islam because so many muslims are moving to europe it's becoming the you know the dominant religion in certain areas so there's going to be a war you know for dominance of islam how do we respond to that well you cannot respond to, you cannot respond to that with your secular system you have to have a more spiritual weapon you know, at hand to fight this to fight the islamization yeah yeah well a, a modernized form of christianity like you know, the Germans were trying to reform Christianity into what they called German Christendom, Deutsch Christentum. Uh, they were trying to make it, say, a more masculine religion, uh, a more warlike religion, so that you could withstand uh, certain things. You know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, our blood unites us in some way. And why shouldn't it? Yeah? So I, I found out on TikTok, if I make picture posts, I, I get I easily get like half a million views or more. <clears throat> Whereas if I post regular videos, I get maybe 5,000 views, or sometimes more, sometimes also 100K or more. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't know anything about orthodoxy. I know it's some form of Christianity, but I don't really know all about it, you know. we need to unite the europeans in a, only with the united europe can we have the strength to withstand the possibility of the us dropping out and then what we're going to have to fend for ourselves and the europeans today are not ready for it we got to prepare them for it we got to wake them up for it yeah the germans had the apparently weak christianity and yet fought to the last bullet at berlin yeah they really fought to keep europe christian or religious against the soviet soviet atheist communists but then you know they lost and what happened is uh europe is practically atheist and communist but only for white people right everybody else is allowed to have their religion yeah, yeah the japanese they were they were actually being led by a sort of uh uh samurai elite and the samurai elite had the belief that even when faced uh, with an insurmountable enemy, they ought to fight to the bitter end. And they did fight to the bitter end. They, they only stopped because of the atom bombs. They were the kamikaze pilots who literally just killed themselves, crashing into the American uh, warships and so on. Now, 
the Japan, if you know a little bit about Japanese society, they have they have or had an extremely brutal upper class, who really uh, who really ruled with you know with tons of bloodshed. You know, uh, I was looking for some some interesting topics to talk about if I could uh, find it somewhere. But. It's becoming a late night show, but normally I would be because it's it's like uh, eleven fifteen p.m. here, and maybe I'll uh, I'll do these normally around eight eight p.m. Yeah, in the Netherlands there's a housing crisis, and now they're blaming the old people. I predicted this a year ago, and all these boomers in my comments they started calling me names that I'm a, I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about. And now exactly what I predicted is the Dutch government is trying to. Uh, drive old people out of their homes to make room for immigrants. <laughs> what do you think will happen if, even if uh, if you take in uh, immigrants into your house and you die, they get to keep the house. See, it's it's a way of transferring homes to immigrants. They're literally killing off the the boomers in the Netherlands, but only to make room for migrants. You know uh, what what do you call the the. Uh, Elderly, elderly side, <laughs> the murder of the elderly. I've been following Keith Woods for a, a little bit of time. He does say some smart, intelligent things now and then. I don't know anything about him otherwise than that, but I suppose, you know, the Irish have their people, you know. Murder or suicide. All right. Do you think that the Netherlands will be better than no? Nothing will change. Geert Wilders is a controlled opposition. Nothing's going to change, you know. Hey, some people. I'm on Twitter, by the way, as Johannes MKX. You can follow me there if you want to write or something. Yeah, you know, in the Netherlands, I was actually never taught about the Holocaust in school, uh, not in primary school. And I don't remember it even during uh, uh, in, in uh, middle school, high school. Uh, but I really only heard about it through the through the TV. Uh, the American made documentaries on Discovery Channel, for example, and occasionally a mainstream film like Schindler's List and so on. That's how we got this information. It was not taught in school. I went to a Catholic school. Maybe that's a... Uh, Maybe that's the reason why they didn't talk about it. <laughs> A lot of youth don't know what Holocaust means. Yeah, Holocausto officially means burnt offering. But when I think of burnt offering, I think of, of the Dresden bombings with the phosphor fires. The white phosphor they dropped on Dresden, burning so many people alive. There's a book by Kurt Vonnegut, an American author, who wrote a tremendous, uh, well-written book about it. Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, I wonder what the book was called. Wikipedia sometimes shows up in the wrong, in the wrong language. Uh, writer. World War Two marriage slaughterhouse five. I mean, if you want to read a sort of novel that is interesting, read this one: Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. It's a worth worthwhile. It's about the Dresden bombings at the end of World War Two. Also, controlled opposition. What does it really mean? Well, imagine that. Uh, I run for president 
and I tell you, I'm going to close the borders, I'm going to give you the wall, I'm going to, you know, give you affordable housing, and then you vote for me, and then it's all of a sudden, I'm going to spend all your tax money on Israel and to defend Zionism. That's it. That's what controlled opposition is, because uh, it means that I work for someone else that I didn't tell you about. Right? Yeah, media and art, yeah. Yeah, I wonder how would we successfully unite our type of people? Uh, I'd say with a spiritual infused, you know, new culture, music, art, in, inner, in some way that we reach through, get through to people on the emotional level. Because people are so programmed by the news, the eight o'clock news, or the seven o'clock news, it is so dominant in people's world, they really believe that is the truth. In the Netherlands, like 80% of people think the news is the truth. You can't get it out of them. You need to reach these people on an emotional level, you know, in, in, a, in a way, you know, uh, there's this graffiti artist, what's he called, Banksy. He's actually a sort of a Marxist communist. It's not even one person, it's a group of people working together. And, uh, and this Banksy, it, it works because it shows the people images that emotionally resonate with them. We need to do something like that, but then with a very different message. You know, all of white girl mass consciousness listens to hip hop artists, you know, really? That just make better music. <laughs> we can see them using media to brainwash people, and they're using it also to rewrite history. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there are things that I cannot talk about because I'll go to jail. As a Dutch person, you can get up to two or three years in jail for denying it. So you can't talk about certain things. So then why why don't you hate on Israel more rather than the immigrants? You know, why should I hate on Israel more? I, I don't care about Israel at all. I don't really care about immigrants. I wish they wouldn't come to Europe and they will have to go back. That's why, you know, my, in my plan, if I were the ruler of Europe, I would tell all the Muslims in Europe, you get a free house in Israel. Go to Israel. Go live there. Also, you know, if you want to be a migrant so bad, why come to Europe? Why don't you go to a place that is actually rich? Like go to Qatar or Dubai. Why are you coming to Germany? Germany is a third world country by now. You know, why don't you go to Beijing and Shanghai where people are actually wealthy? Right? Why do you come to Europe? Right? Why do you come to Europe? You know, it's, it's a strange thing doesn't have to be so all right uh, I'm gonna take a break I'll be back tomorrow again around 8 p.m. and I hope not to get suspended in the meantime so uh, you can watch my uh, go to my Substack newsletter www.jmk.info or you can also go to my YouTube at the great Johannes and oh let's see my telegram at johannesmk <laughs> and you can go to my twitter at johannesmkx so i have a different username sadly because uh i couldn't get i couldn't get the same name on every platform so that was the reason why all right have a nice evening